Okay, so good evening and hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, interview preparatory session that uh, we at GEO Institute have organized. Joining us today are our panel members, uh, Ms. Mendes, uh, Abhishek, Amit, and Ms. Bindu, uh, who will be helping you uh, or just talking about the different parameters on which uh, an individual will be assessed during their admission interviews at GEO Institute and also just giving you some tips or some strategies of uh, how to crack admission interviews, not just at GEO Institute, but at various other colleges um, um, you know, that are that are there in the country or elsewhere. Um, and, and just, uh, you know, from their vast experience, uh, talk a little bit about um, what really are the few things that one should keep in mind when they're entering that interview room. Um, so I'll just start uh, by uh, by the first question that, you know, that's a very common question or a general question that, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, students have that in their mind, which are, what according to you are the, you know, if you know, if somebody asks you, what are the three major tips or keys that, you know, you'd like to give to an applicant um, when they are just, you know, entering the interview room? So probably we can start with you, Ms. Mendes. Uh, Ma'am, you're on, yeah. Before we begin, I'd just like to say, I hope you all, whoever's listening is excited. Just stop for a moment, close your eyes and say, Today, I'm going to learn something new. Okay, I can't see you, but do that. So if I would say there are many strategies which you would use, many tips, but since she's asked for three, I will just mention three. The first is your mindset. Everything starts in the mind or every fight, every war is fought in the mind. Because if you can believe it, you that you can do it, it will happen. Right, you know that. So a mini, winning mindset, a confident and positive um, attitude is the first, the first beginning. And self confidence is just the belief that you are enough. You have whatever it is to take to get you that admission. And uh, when you have this positive mindset, it also helps you to showcase your abilities and your skills in a better manner. Certainly avoid comparison with others. You remember when Shah Rukh Khan, I think uh, it's well known, was asked in an interview, why did he choose to be uh, join Bollywood, which was, you know, such a cutthroat uh, competition. And he said, I always believe that I compete with myself. And so I know that uh, success will come along the way. So treat it just like uh, another challenge which you have faced. And treat it like a conversation, not as an interrogation, so that you can have a confident approach. The second is, will actually be the first, uh, make a good first impression. That's, that's, the, that's the key for anything when you meet anybody, interview or anything else. And this is, has a few aspects. The first is, of course, appearance. Dress professionally, even if it is a virtual interview, dress to impress dress for success because the way you dress will be the way you will be addressed so uh, don't carry too many things with you just take your resume and your certifications in a professional uh, looking portfolio dress professionally avoid chunky jewelry avoid any fancy uh, dress dress or makeup keep your body language uh, confident make eye contact I want you all of you who are looking, uh, actually, to just look at me just now. Am I making uh, 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 contact, uh, eye contact with you? Do you feel that I'm speaking to you? Yeah. Now look. Do you feel that I'm speaking to you? No. So eye contact in person is comfortable eye contact. Eye contact virtually is always looking into the camera. Even if the session is 40, the interview is 45 minutes, you won't look at yourself or the interviewer. Clear. Also, your posture needs to be your shoulders drawn back, your head tall so that you walk in confidently, make a friendly introduction. You can take the initiative of making the introduction like, nice to meet you. Thank you for your time. You know, not my name is so-and-so, etc. 
uh, be punctual. And what is punctual? Punctual is five or 10 minutes before time. On time is late. So be clear on these things. And uh, as, as far as I said dress, let me just tell you, it reminds me of a story actually. There was one, one candidate who went to an uh, interview dressed like a, like a gypsy with his hair all, you know, uh, uh, ruffled and his clothes dirty and his uh, hair, uh, he was smelling and his shoes were mud cut, uh, covered with mud. The interviewer politely told him to come back the next week. Next week, he turns up, guess what? Dressed in the same way. But that uh, candidate was the famous actor George Clooney. Now, you and I are not mostly applying for a for a character's uh, for an actor's role, so make sure you're properly dressed. And the third tip I would say: do thorough research. Four areas in which you need to do thorough research. First, yourself, your traits, your interests, your values, how they align with Leo, with Geo. Then you need to uh, research the website and the vision, mission, etc. of Geo very carefully. Research the curriculum. Last tip, research the interviewer. Why? Because you want to make a bond with the interviewer. The only reason you get selected is that you make a, the person likes you, you're credible, and you're memorable. So in order to be liked, try and find some commonality. Find out the interviewer. You can do it very easily by through LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, you know, the your uh, searches, you can easily get to find out who is the interviewer. So uh, I would say these are the three things I would keep in mind, you know, as general tips. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Abhishek, do you want to add something to Ms. Mendes's three tips? Yeah, I think I think I'm going to uh, struggle to follow up from that. Um, thank you, ma'am. I really appreciate that. I, I think to everybody on the call, right? Um, first of all, I think, Attending something like this is a fantastic first step, right? And, and I think a lot of credit goes to Geo Institute to have a, the foresight, the maturity, and uh, just the open-heartedness to say that, you know, we will conduct a session like this. Not only that, it helps students to understand how to go about their interview. More importantly, uh, this is the uh, application season. So uh, like everything that Geo and Reliance does, there is a greater good at at play and 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 it's almost uh, expected of them but i think it's always great to see that always being put into practice so i would like to call that out but let me come to three points very uh, very nicely said in fact uh, brenda ma'am you took my first point away so i'm going to add a new one um i think the biggest thing in today's world be authentic be yourself there is too much of a facade in the world today, right? We are all struggling. We all lived two or three different lives. One on Instagram, one on LinkedIn, one on uh, Twitter, one on Snapchat, and then effectively one real life somewhere. And in fact, even when that, what is in front of our friends and family is probably even different than, than ours. I, I work in a company uh, where, well, you're no longer a startup, but I have a lot of young people and I see how they interact with their friends and family is very different from who they are actually at work and who they are actually in person, right? So be authentic, right? Be who you are because it's very, very refreshing. I think it's very simple, right? Uh, be authentic, be yourself. People like to see that. Uh, you'd be very surprised. Uh, second, um, I want people to understand this concept very simply. Uh, understand the difference between listening and hearing. An interview is a lot about listening, not hearing. What we do is we listen. We don't listen to questions. We hear, hear a question and we start responding in our mind even before the interviewer starts uh, has finished the question. Interestingly enough, most of us start speaking. And it's an involuntary reaction, right? It's like when the doctor hits your leg with that small uh, uh, whatever hammer and your leg goes up, just by hearing a question, we are programmed because of giving exams and time tests and mental maths that we start giving an answer. Uh, 
remember the difference between listening and hearing is listening is about intention you listen with intent you're trying to understand you're trying to process uh, without judgment without giving an answer to the other person so listen first don't hear right i think the third piece is please remember you live in the world of influencing not persuading right don't be a tv ad be a be a social media influencer the whole point in an interview is not to just leave one or two spikes in the interview is to be very consistent in terms of influencing your interviewer remember an interview is is about performance but the bigger thing is the perception of the performance right so the interviewer must walk away with being influenced by you not persuaded by you right a tv ad may ask you to buy something and you may buy it once and never buy it again but the reason why we stick around with all these social media influencers they are very consistent with their messaging and the theme and the tone and everything that they have about them is very consistent again that is something in today's world is very fresh right there are so many things there's so much volatility there's so much inconsistency if you are consistent you are going to influence people your consistency is going to be very and i can use that word is very sexy consistency is very sexy in today's world right because there's so much happening and i think those are the three things i would say and i think at the end i would all say to everyone right please have fun don't walk into an interview with the weight of the world right i have um i've i've been around and worked for long enough that i've done enough interviews both in the corporate world for admissions for my own alma maters where i've worked uh, where i've studied and students walk in young people walk in with the weight of the world the expectations of the world on their shoulders you just you can see that person and you can see that they they're already beaten before the interview started right don't walk in with the weight of the world on your shoulders have fun this is you're going to do many interviews in your life you're going to be very successful you're going to be far more successful than all these people on the panelists and all the people on this call you know why because you're in a country which is going up and up and up you are far ahead of us you are far more uh, you have far more resources than us so don't walk in with the weight of the world right uh, we probably were not blessed and born in a time when india was doing well india is doing fantastic right now the world uh, that is surround you are surrounded with is doing very well so don't worry about that i think that that would be my sort of you know closing thought on that thanks abhishek and i, I hope that think, makes uh, sense i am also just a little bit more pumped right now in just in life and in general so thank yeah, you yeah i think i think <laughs> yeah there's enough uh, to there's enough to keep us negative right the, the other way to look at it is uh, there's so much to be positive about true right and i think if you walk in with that positivity you change the atmosphere of the room even if you are behind this small little screen which i am right now i i'm probably 3 inches on a on those screens <laughs> probably even smaller on right so even even that small screen you can bring a lot of positivity to the conversation thank you amit a uh, lot of pressure now for your three tips <laughs> but over to you sorry amit yeah yeah i think uh, our panelists uh, brenda ma'am and abhishek you, you have covered most of the points and some of the points i i really wanted to make but i think you know just just to continue what uh, brenda ma'am talked about and uh, what abhishek you also talked about see one thing is we you have to take this uh, don't take this as an interview think of this as a conversation so the interviewer wants to know you you want to know the interviewer you want to know what what geo institute is all about so this is an experience that you would have to, together this is a conversation so think of it as a conversation second i would say prepare well so practice uh, practice as much as you can practice all common interview questions uh, you know and develop some responses so practice speaking out loud and clearly practice with a friend practice with uh, with with someone experienced in in that domain uh, i'm sure you would find someone in uh, at your work or at any other place maybe practice with your parents practice with your friends but 
make sure you practice because that would help you build that confidence. Be only practice will help you build that confidence. And with that practice, you can always steer the interview in the direction that you would want. So this is the third most uh, third important point. You would want to steer the interview in the direction that you would want and not let it go in any other direction. And how can you do that? See, when you start any interview, there, there would be a question like this, tell me about yourself. So there would be an icebreaker kind of a question. So, you know, with that first question itself, if we can steer it in a direction that you would want, okay, this is this is what I am about, and this is the kind of project that I have done, and this is what interests me, then the uh, you know this is the conversation that that two people are having, then very naturally the interviewer, the person at the other end, would ask you about that interest. So you're steering the interview in the direction that you would want. See, it's only a thirty-minute conversation or uh, 25 minutes, 30, or 40 minutes kind of a conversation. So in that conversation, if you can steer it in the direction that you want, you have won the interview and you would be successful. So those are the three things <laughs> that, uh, I would like Thanks. to uh, Thank you, Amit. And I think they're very, very valid. And uh, I would uh, I would like to end this question by asking Ms. Bindu if she has, because she is, she's one person who at office also is absolutely crisp. Whenever we, we've gone to her with a question that what do we do in this situation, she will give you these four or five key points that really stick with us. So, Hames, uh, what are your three tips? Uh, for Thanks, Ritu. Therapy? I think uh, all the panelists have covered it thoroughly. The only thing is I would probably add value by, you know, saying uh, like when Brenda says grooming, if you have a ponytail, ensure you have gel in it and it's well combed and groomed. For sure, please be cool, not an issue at all. And uh, that's fine by us because we like to see different people and we invest a lot in diversity. That's very important to us. And uh, like Abhishek said, don't come with the weight of the world, be cool, be confident, and that's half the game won. Try and look at each interviewer in the eye and influence, ensure that you're looking, giving equal time to everybody. And as to what Amit has said, the only value I can add is a lot of times I've interviewed people for the first 30 minutes and haven't been able to see a character in them. And then they say something like, you know, in Korea, they do this. And I said, why Korea? Then he tells me that, you know, I went to Korea, learned Korean and all that half an hour of the interview. And he hasn't showcased that, which was the key point. You know, so ensure, like Amit was saying, steer the conversation where you want. A lot of times when you're honest and you don't know, I don't know the answer to this, but there's this interesting fact which I did in the LG factory. Could be where you're steering the conversation and taking it to highlight some of the essentials or key highlights and achievements of your career. Please ensure they're not, you know, missed out on. Because even we want to know about you. We see a lot of vanilla candidates. We want to see what these highlights are. So please don't miss out. Even if we don't ask you that question, we give you a window at the end or the start of the conversation saying, is there anything else you would like to share about you yourself? Or is there anything that has changed from the time of your application to now? Use that window to showcase these things, which are highlights. And say, you know, it may be not a great thing, but I'm a national chess champion. Would be a great thing because we've never thought of chess. We are talking about your career and other things. Okay, so please use these windows appropriately to showcase yourself because uh, this could be the actual winner for you. Okay, that's all. Absolutely. Thank you. And I think, um, you know, to everyone, I think we've received some um, amazing tips that are really going to help you perform, um, you know, in your interview. Um, and uh, I'm just going to, you know, move on to the next part of it, because one of the key factors of these interview will be where our panelists will be kind of assessing you on your domain knowledge, um, you know, talking a little bit about what you've done in your past. So, um, you know, my question to the panelists is that what advice or strategies would you recommend for our applicants uh, when when a domain question is kind of you know um you know asked to them so 
um, do you, how do they approach this question? Do you do they take the route of of using an example, or uh, or should they should they not do something like this and just um, stick to like a concise uh, answer when they when they're talking about the domain knowledge? So uh, again, we can start with uh, with you, Brenda Ma. Well, I haven't really really dwelt on this, uh, but uh, I think it is. Uh, uh, you have to because today we are in a world of ai and data uh, data analytics so you just have to have that uh, that perception of how the industry how is ai changing uh, changing the industry in which you are looking to um, uh, to um, uh, targeting uh, what kind does that industry uh, yeah, what is the threat in that industry that ai could have does that industry have a long runway how are these competitors uh, dealing with uh, the technical uh, knowledge and domain? And where are you at that level? At least have you uh, have you uh, uh, experimented with some of the new tools? And are you expecting that at the end of this, how are you going to use this uh, one year of with uh, Geo to actually prepare yourself to to for the future of work. Because well, the future of work is going to be very, very different. We all know that. And uh, the domain knowledge also is going to be different. A lot of people will be, maybe some will be rendered jobless, but many new jobs will come. So you need to know what are the new, new, new jobs that would be coming, higher level AI, maybe a prompters, um, you know, uh, prompters is a, or cybersecurity, or these areas you need to investigate to see where you fit in and where your uh, you know expertise could come in, uh, so it is different. It, it would be different for different industries, and also the new innovations that are coming in. Are you prepared? I mean, are you that kind of an innovative person? You know, who innovation is what just putting creativity to 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 find in a different area to find make new products like um, you know Steve Jobs combined the computer and the phone, though he never wanted a phone. But it came out that way. So, what are the what are the uh, how are you sort of trying to innovate in your job uh, career? Whatever whatever you're learning is also something that you can apply to your you to your career. For instance, design thinking may be one of your uh, one of your uh, one of the topics you're learning. This is not really domain knowledge, but there is absolutely great model to use de designing design thinking to your job search so these are the kind of sort of things i would like you to you know so that you can uh, articulate yourself as somebody who's already planning to be future ready with the, the new domain knowledge and of course abhishek will be able to give us more insight into the ai tools and all that would be coming in and probably also amit but this is my general uh, approach that most people are the parents aren't aware so the students also, you know, are not conscious. Now that you're planning to join Geo, you need to give the uh, give uh, evidence that you you are planning to be future ready, and you're using going to use this time to pick up these new skills. Like you know, in the old uh, the first uh, revolution, we had the uh, the blue collar workers, then we had the second industrial revolution, we had the uh, white collar workers. Now we have the green collar workers, the sustainability, the intellectual, the the thinking jobs, right? So the skills which require there, which you are also going to assess on, are basically your critical thinking. How are you going to challenge yourself for, to take away, to remove biases and traditional biases? How are you going to become a learning oriented? I saw that Mukesh Ambani has also written in his, uh, you know, main, main thing that he wants to create an excellent center with the, which is teaching, the institute is teaching people to learn, learning to learn, so that you become a continuous learner. And also problem, problem solving skills, which will, you know, use many methods, the five Y method, you know, and various things, but it's not really technical. And of course, your communication skills will, uh, you know, will uh, will be a sort of a game changer in your. And I loved what you said about active listening, uh, Abhishek. That is so important because the questions asked are, you know, you don't 
you have to ask yourself, what does the interviewer want to know? What is behind the question? What is not being asked is, is actually the, you know, and listen carefully to, to understand, um, nod, be part of the conversation, speak, you know, only uh, uh, concisely, etc. All that comes in. But that was a very good point. And also, I think what Amit said, that the first question is your driver's seat question. Tell me something about yourself is not your biography. It is to put in those little, little things. Suppose I've volunteered with Udan, which the interviewer may not know much about. And that leads the interviewer to ask you the questions and you get control of the, of the interview. That was a very good point also that I had wanted to make. So I think Abhishek can tell us maybe. Yeah, thank you, about. thank you, ma'am. And Abhishek, um, you know when you when when you know you talk about uh, these domain skills, I'd like for you to highlight uh, for our marketing and our sports management students in general about how can they showcase their domain knowledge. And with Amit, we'll kind of move into for our AI and DS students specifically um, that um, you know how how can they really showcase uh, and really kind of impress the the academician also who's going to be there in the in the in the panel uh you know that's going to be there so over to you Abhishek. so i think i think it's very simple uh, in a way that uh, i think the candidate first needs to check on themselves to say am i a fresh student or a fresher coming in or i'm someone with some experience now if you have experience particularly with marketing but particularly with sales or business development or if you're coming from not those domains, but a different domain, the biggest question is, and it applies to a job interview as well as a, a campus interview, what is it that you have learned in your past or done in your past, which gives you confidence and therefore will give me confidence that you can actually do the course, right? So what we are looking for from your past is give me examples of your domain knowledge where you have applied it, right? Because by virtue of experience, uh, so I've, I have a very deep sustainability background. Funny now I do learning and development. But if I were to ever interview with an electric vehicle company, then I better know everything about um, electric vehicles, the industry, uh, about, uh, you know, what is the power efficiency of a silicon cell, um, you know, what percentage of uh, inefficiency is there in the uh, solar conversion to electric conversion? Um, what's the biggest uh, uh, biggest step in the solar industry which is going to happen? What about electric cars? Are electric cars truly sustainable or not, right? Uh, or maybe it's just a big, uh, uh, big tamasha that has been created. So by virtue of experience I have, and by the way, your experience could be as, as, limited as one year or six months or one and a half years or two and a half years but your experience must have examples and you must bring out those examples very clearly to call out hey this is what i did and if i ran my own uh, instagram page i ran my own linkedin page um, here's the number of impressions i have here's the here's that awesome post that i did because remember everybody has a phone today right so you can quickly go and check it. Right? One of the things that has really impressed me is somebody says, I have a page. Why don't you go and have a look at it? There you create validation for yourself. And by the way, even if they don't look at it that time, at least in that five-minute window when one interview switches to the other, they will look at it. And you have now given them the power of influence, not persuasion. Now they can look through quickly through 10, 20 videos of yours and posts of yours and then make a complete picture of you and say, wow, that's a good candidate. That's a unique candidate. Now, here's an interesting question. What about the freshers? Right? You will say, Abhishek, I have nothing to show. Right? Because I just finished graduation and I saw some of the students in the Q&A sort of mention that, hey, I'm just a fresher. What do I talk about? Brilliant. Now, what you need to show me is what Mr. Ambani very beautifully wrote, and I've seen it at the Geo campuses. I want to see that you have the ability to learn, right? And I'm going to teach you, I'm going to make you learn how to learn. Therefore, the biggest thing I want to understand from you is 
do you have learning agility the concept is called learning agility or learning potential therefore what you need to tell me if you tell me that you are deeply interested in digital marketing or sports management can you tell me whether this year which player in the ipl will cross the 20 crore p mark you better know that and how will you know that not that you are an insider at the ipl is you should have done your research and you need to know the trends and more importantly the insights please remember lot of students fall for this trap they talk about great data sets oh do you know uh, sports management market in india will grow by 20% sorry ladies and gentlemen data is cheap in this world data doesn't cost data is free in fact the people on the call made it free right because of jio and reliance data is free in our country you don't you don't pay for data if you if you don't believe me travel outside the world and you will know how much data costs data both Uh, um, on a phone and actual data on Google is free. Data has no value. Insights have value. So, what is the trend? What is the analysis? What is your analysis? The moment you show me that skill, and you show me that ability and that learning agility, I am convinced. Because as a fresher, if you can show me that learning agility. you know what you could go to data science also it doesn't matter but more importantly if you have shown me interest in that area with let's say digital marketing or sports management and you can show me the ability to understand the industry from outside right and call out a trend wow you have me seriously impressed right um and you know what academicians love insights right because they know all the data so you can't please remember you can't beat an academician on data right don't try just don't try but you can impress them with insights right because if they have not thought about it then they are super impressed if they have thought about it and they uh, sort of see the insight now they have you validated what they have said and academicians love validation right they are they are they're extremely smart people they they want to feel like you know they've done something interesting so yeah i think those would be my thoughts around it thanks abhishek and i think they're very very valid i think you really need to know the subject well and need to know what you're talking um, you know um, fluff doesn't work uh, um, you know in interviews because the people sitting in front of you are probably a little bit more intelligent than than you are and they know what they're doing there i mean the you know uh, so, sorry nitu can i add one more thought around oh. that sorry uh, i mean i apologize i think fluff doesn't work here because these are not generic courses yeah uh, please uh, this is not a generic mba this is not a generic bba right you are coming in with eyes open to an institute which is really cutting edge and they're bringing in very specialized high quality courses right in a particular area so i think if you're looking for something generic then do generic i think that would uh would be my thought um um as much as the admissions team will cringe at this point if i don't shake don't reduce our applicant pool but i think genuinely so right um uh, these are some very awesome very targeted very specialized courses in a way and uh, uh, then you you need to be thoroughly in line with it so what i feel sorry Thank you. No, I think that's very valid. And Amit, uh, you know, uh, before you start your answer, I I would like to I would uh, you know want to ask you another question. Is that a lot of people in AIDS specifically tell us that they come from various domains, right? Because they come from probably um, chemical engineering or civil engineering. Some, of course, from computer science and IT uh, and mechanical. And they're all kind of because, as even Brenda Ma'am mentioned, that AI and data science is something that's really kind of um, you know now applicable in all these domains and. and uh, you know a lot of people ask us that when we sit for interviews you know and we come with a with a certain background or a certain major in our engineering uh, what are the questions or how how do these applications of ai and data science um, you know relate to the domain that we come from okay so so uh, let me answer it this way so there are three things that i want to talk about here so first of all given any kind of a domain knowledge or an any technical skill questions how do you answer it so first first thing is 
how do you how do you articulate it how do you communicate so uh, what you want uh, what we would love to see is someone who can communicate and articulate answer very very with a with a certain kind of a structure so what i would recommend us and what i generally like to do is follow some kind of a framework so what are what are typical frameworks that you can follow say a car kind of a method so what does it mean so you state the context you state the action and then you state the result and what are those domain uh, knowledge related question so ritu you mentioned a very important point some of our candidates may not be from computer sciences may not have that kind of an ai background maybe someone is a chemical engineer someone is a mechanical engineer but not not that kind of a background so how do we un, how do we evaluate them on domain knowledge so for this candidates what we are looking for are two things one is prepare on whatever you have written on your resume whatever you have done uh, in your undergrad we would ask questions about what what you have already done because we want to know you we want to know what is your learning orientation we want to know what is your understanding of the subjects that you have already learned we want to know uh, what you have done in your work how you have solved certain uh, problems so uh, so uh, you know prepare on everything that you have written on on your resume prepare on everything that you have done in your undergrad including any projects that you have done in your undergrad prepare on whatever work that you have you would have done or whatever projects that you would have undertaken in your work experience come prepared with certain examples whatever you have written you can expect any questions on any any pointer any small pointer on your on your resume we we want you to discuss that second and this is the second kind of question so some some kind of a technical questions because see what are you interviewing for it's a masters program in ai and ds so we expect a certain level as well so even if you come from a chemical engineering background or a mechanical engineering background but you are interested in ai and ds we want to know what brings in that interest how have you demonstrated that interest have you taken up any course have you Uh, are you aware of the developments in the industry are you aware of the develop uh, of some of the trends in ai and uh, are you aware uh, of the fundamentals can you handle the mathematical rigor can you handle the rigor that you can expect in uh, computer science do you have that computational thinking so given a problem can you break it down into sub problems and solve that so there there are expect technical questions as well so we 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 expect certain base minimum uh, know how of those uh, uh, those technical concepts we we expect a certain amount of mathematical rigor we expect questions on say probability or statistics some case study questions or some 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 kind of puzzles so prepare yourself uh, for that and know about your industry thank you abhishek uh, thank you amit sorry uh, and i think uh, that is so valid you know and just picking up from what abhishek said that um, you know there are specialized programs so you need to kind of prepare yourself for the program a lot of there are a lot of questions on the q and a as well talking about how we kind of changing careers and moving into um, you know from say uh, marketing to data science or things like that but you need to understand that what you're getting into is something that you're going to be assessed on of course there will be questions related to what you've done so far but that that point of um, you know that agility the learning agility part that was very well mentioned in today's discussion is that that's something that, so of course we don't expect you to do a full blown nlp question or or an answer is because that's what you will learn when you enter the institute but will you be able to do it or not and if you have that kind of mindset and skill set that's what will be assessed uh, you know during these interview process uh, ms bindu would you like to add something to the technical question bit uh, of the of of the interview process nothing much to be added ritu i think all of them have thoroughly covered everything so like they say prep 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 
is very important. Display a learning orientation because that's something domain knowledge and learning orientation is, let it be any school, any institute, they're going to check that out for sure. Okay, and your concepts should be, funda should be very solid because if they are solid, anything can be built on it. That's important. And uh, that's the important thing that you display your learning orientation, even if your concepts are good, anything else, how you show your passion, like Abhishek said, is very important. If you're following a rock group, how do you follow it all through? Show your passion that way, let it be, even if you do not have the work experience, I am very consistent in doing this. That should be displayed and demonstrated in the interview. That's very important. Thank you. Um, and I think uh, enough of the heavy, let's come to a little lighter uh, part of, and that, that that's why my, that's what my next question will be like. You know, interviews sometimes are perceived to be scary, uh, you know, um, and, and a lot of people in general are very nervous, um, you know, or just, Sometimes you you very you know you get up in the morning and you're very pumped and you're very confident, but as soon as you know you have that two minutes to enter that room, that sudden gush of nervousness or or underconfidence kind of really uh, really pipes in. So, what are your key pointers that uh, that you'd like to kind of give it to our applicants to not be nervous? And uh, you know, how does one cope up with this sudden nervousness or just in general, you know, people sometimes very good candidates also are not able to get through because, you know, um, they just are not able to talk, uh, you know. So what are your tips on how to calm their nerves down? So again, we'll start with with you, Brenda. Man. To realize it, if you're, uh, you know, if you're nervous or, uh, you know, apprehensive about it and you are, you know, you have some, uh, you're scared about how you're going to go through the interview, it's very normal. So everybody else is going through the same process. In fact, it's said that interviewing is the third thing that people fear the most. The first being death, the second public speaking and interview. So it is very normal. So take it as that you have faced other challenges, right? So this is just one more. So that makes it a, a little easier also. And the keep it... Keep it conversational, as we've said. You know, don't uh, don't make it into an interrogation. Be be flexible about the outcome. Don't bother about the outcome. Just focus on the moment and what is being asked and reply. Leave the outcome out. Don't you know? Don't try to prejudge the uh, outcome. That will also help you in your active listening, so that you're listening clearly to what answer to what is uh, being asked rather than thinking, you know, what is the interviewer thinking about this? How is it, uh, you know, how is it impacting? Leave, leave all that out. And of course, uh, practice, as we've said, practicing mock interviews makes, you know, is a great thing with your friends, your family, keep or even in the mirror, practice all these questions, which uh, Amit has said, prepare your stories, use the you know, the car method or the sword method, which is, you know, the situation, the obstacles. It's very important to, to, uh, to speak about the obstacles. That is why in the start, obstacles, action and result. Obstacles, very important because that shows your problem solving skills. That shows your critical thinking, your innovative ideas. Uh, they say that, uh, you know, it visualize your success actually. And a few days before, actually, visualize your success. These visualization successes uh, exercises help. Deep breathing also helps. And be comfortable with imperfection. Don't expect, don't expect to give perfect answers, you know, to all the questions. You will improve as you keep going on. Be comfortable with uh, being asked unexpected questions, with being, you know, with being uh, imperfect uh, you know, in your answers. And uh, I think these are the uh, sort of common things you would keep in uh, my in mind to keep it, keep it natural, be authentic, be yourself, just become, uh, uh, be, uh, be comfortable. And remember, think of other successes that you've had in the past. So bring those to mind. 
So if you have if you have had other successes, that will also success builds confidence, right? So at every interview also you attend, you're building your confidence. So I think that's some of the ways uh, you know you can make it uh, uh, reduce your anxiety. Breathing exercises, also I think power posing, you know, just before you enter the interview, and uh, prep, there's nothing like preparation and practice. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Abhishek, what are your Key tips. I think the biggest thing is the uh, and, and maybe I'll do three. Uh, I think the first thing is remember when you're here for the interview, someone saw something in you, right? So so be happy about it, right? Um, and you will and you will realize that uh, it's okay. You got here, right? Uh, so. So I think be happy about it. We often take a lot of things for granted, right? And we do not celebrate the smallest things. Um, you're nervous, it's absolutely fine. By the way, if you're nervous, it's fantastic. It means that the thing really means something to you. Because if you're going to an interview and you're not worried at all, that tells me that you're not, you don't care about it, either that job or that course or that program. You're just going through the motion. So if you're nervous, it's fantastic. It means the thing means something to you, right? Uh, and please remember, your interviewers are experienced and smart enough. They can see that. They can see um, that uh, want and the need on your face, right? We, we've done enough interviews in our life uh, to, to, to recognize that. We recognize hunger. You'll be very surprised. Uh, people can recognize hunger on your face, right? So... So I think that's number one. Uh, please remember that you, you've gotten to this point. So celebrate it. Second, um, one of the things which always works for me whenever I'm nervous, especially when trying to meet a customer, I work with a lot of C uh, big tech founders and sometimes I'm overawed by the person that I'm going to speak to. I'm a little nervous. I'm pitching to them. Um, even when I used to interview a, a, as an employee trying to get jobs, very, uh, very, very uh, nervous before my interview with the country managing director at Apple. Um, I just remembered all the people in my life and my family and, you know, it put a smile on my face when I entered the room. Now I just um, always think of my four-year-old daughter or an half-year-old daughter. It gives me the most immense pleasure. It just makes me really happy. So think of your parents. Think, so, think of your loved ones. Think of your siblings. Uh, think of siblings who make uh, who irritate you a lot. It will put a smile on your face. Um, think of a girlfriend or boyfriend who um, you find very funny and you love deeply. Like think of people you love, right? Think of um, you represent them in a way, right? And and uh, not to carry that burden or expectation, but rather uh, think of the the kind of joy would be on their faces when you crack this. Right, so that gives you a lot of power, right? That gives you a lot of positivity, and um, you know, it's, it's something I'll say, and 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 uh, I shouldn't say this like I'm an old person, but you know, young people today, are particularly, you know, uh, you can you can see when they walk in with positivity, right? It's very, it's um, it's almost uh, uh, how do I say it? it it's uh, it's fantastic. Like it, you can you can breathe and smell it, right? When they walk in, the air changes in the room, right? Uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's almost magical, right? You can see that person brings in that energy, and they are talking with a particular tone. There, it's it's very different, right? You're a very confident bunch. We understand that, but we want to see that confidence. Don't kill it, right? Don't kill it on the altar of nervousness. Um, I think the last thing is very simple, right? What if this doesn't happen? So what? Right? Uh, you, again, as I go back, I said, you are a generation which is aspirational, right? You must do inspirational things. Uh, we were a generation which was desperate. We just did things because we had to. We had no option, Right? So you have so many options. You have so many places you can go. So many places you can apply, right? Um, 
you must be happy that an institute of that quality like you has called you for an interview. It means there is something great with you. And it, an interview is an interview. It's, you know, the math works for you some days. It doesn't work for you some days. Um, please remember it took Virat Kohli three years to score a century. And this is probably the man who's perfected his art, right? Sometimes it doesn't work out for you. It doesn't work out for you. You didn't give up cricket, right? Um, by the way, he has access to the best performance coaches in the world. Uh, he doesn't even drink the water that you drink. He drinks some black water, which none of us can afford on this call, I guess. Maybe Ritu can. Um, but he has access to everything and still can score a century for three years, right? So, so I think it's very important to to remember that, right? That it's okay if it doesn't work out, then got something else. But you can't walk in with that interview thinking, oh, what if this doesn't work out? You're going to bomb it. You're going to bomb it really badly. Right? Don't do that. Right? Uh, by the way, uh, it's very easy to say. I think all of us on the call can confidently say we bombed the interview here mm-hmm. and there and bombed a conversation here and there. I've done it. I'll, I'll raise my hand. Right? But but uh, hopefully it's not the Geo Institute. I, I, would, I, I would be, I would love it if the admissions committee would be struggling saying, who the hell we select right now? We have no idea. Right? You've got such great candidates that everybody is making it so hard to select uh, who to take forward, right? And I think, think of it, make, just think of these people on the call and say, let's make their lives really, really hard, right? And uh, yeah, take it from there. I think we would love that problem to have. Um, and, I just uh, want to uh, paraphrase, uh, paraphrase so many things he said in two sentences. Sure, ma'am. One is, that the very fact you've been called for an interview and so many applicants may have been there, you've passed the first test. That means they think you are eligible. One. Secondly, reframe that fear as excitement as he has said. Just two, you know, points, great points which you've made. Thank you. And I agree. I think, uh, um, you know, just, uh, just enter thinking that you've done it already and you've done it. Just have that mindset and I think you've got it. That's what I do at least. And I think uh, uh, that really helps me, um, you know, just enter, uh, you know, difficult rooms uh, with with a lot of ease. Amit, uh, Amit also meets a lot of difficult people on a daily basis. So Amit, what do you have to say, uh, you know, for this, uh, for these just the students that are going to appear for the interviews? See, see, first of all, you know, we, we have to accept. Acceptance is important. Everyone gets nervous and it is very natural to get nervous. So what can you do? What what can be your, your means to overcome this? So you have to find your own means. There are certain tips that people can give. So we have talked about it. Brenda Mab gave the visualization technique that you can do. Or you can you can practice some deep breathing. But what uh, you know, what one important thing that I believe which uh, which works for me is getting that good night's sleep before any interview. If you have something important the the next day, try to make sure that you get a very good night's sleep. You should get adequate amount of rest, at least eight hours of sleep. That will really, really help. Second, eat healthily before the interview. (laughs) Don't have, uh, you know, pizza or any any other meal that you would not like to have. Eat healthy before the interview. And third is practice. Practice as much as you can. Practice with your friend. Practice with family. Practice with whoever you can. That's that's the only three things that I would like to add. That's it. Thank you. And I think uh, they are so valid. I mean, we talk about such... Uh, you know, intellectual and high level things, but these are the basics that one should not miss at all, you know, if because you're not your best, then anything that you've done so far in your life, you will not be able to communicate. So, you know, have saved that energy for the interview and not waste it at, uh, you know, anything that you're doing. Heems, what do you have to say? I'm going to give you uh, reassuring news. And that is uh, from the other side of the table. Where, I, where it is stress interviews are a thing of the past, 
Yeah. Nobody believes in them any longer. We believe the candidate should be given an env environment which is empowering to them and uh, they perform their best. You know, who would want to pin somebody down and extract something? We would want them to share their knowledge and give their best facets to the interviewer. And so even the interviewer has been trained on how to take an interview. So do not worry about it. They're not here to be judgmental about you and be biased about you, but they've been trained to give you the best environment, to empower you, to perform to your best ability, to display what you know. Okay, and there are instances where it has become a stress interview and the whole interview has been negated so that they can be re-interviewed because we believe that's not the right environment for a candidate to display his best features. So this is news from the other side, which should be reassuring to you. And don't worry about it at all. And uh, if you get nervous, it's absolutely fine. Say, can I take a break of five minutes? Can I take a fiver? Can I have a sip of water? And, you know, try and distract the thing. And a lot of interview panel members also realize this and say, you know, why don't you take a walk and come back? We are happy to do it after some time. And that's how they've been trained. So don't worry about it. If you need a break, express it so. Very natural to be there. Okay. So, but this is a life-changing thing for you. Don't let these things get to you. Take that break. Talk to the thing. We appreciate that you've been confident enough to ask us for that time. Go out, have a walk and come back. Chill and do your best. That's important also. Thank you. And I think, uh, you know, words spoken by a very wise lady who's taken, I think, interviews collectively more than all of us. Uh, so um, keep the keep those things in mind. It is it is very important for you to accept what you're feeling at that moment. Uh, don't, as you know, we started the conversation with be authentic. You know, don't try to hide or lie or whatever. Uh, you know, the facade that, that's on because as I was saying very rightly said, it's already too much in the world. We don't want it anymore. And I know we are kind of really reaching the end of um, today's session, but I'm going to um, ask one last question to our panelists. And that's also one common question that, that, our, uh, that our applicants asked today is that what are a few things that one should not do? Um, during an interview. Um, and very quickly, you know, we'll just have one or two of them from every one of you. Um, and probably this time I'm going to start it from the end. So Heems, would you like to start with uh, what should one not do in an interview? What you should not do is uh, try a sense of humor if you're not very confident. Okay, it requires a lot of confidence, you know, so that's very important and uh, do not do that. Lie or be anything that you are not. Pretend to be anything that you are not unless it's very good to say, you know, I'm sorry, I do not know the answer to that. Okay, and proceed with something else. And I can sing too, maybe, <laughs> or whatever you want to do. But that requires a lot of confidence and other things to do. But, uh, you know, do not be something that you are not. Create a facade and, you know, try and pretend these things. If you do not know, just say so. Or, like, if Amit asks me a question, I will say, sorry, dude, I'm not an engineering person, you know. Let me ask me something creative and I'll probably give you a copyright law, you know, <laughs> that way. Try and do these things, but do not pretend to be what you are not. Okay, that's very important. Thank you. Amit? Yeah. So, active listening is uh, very important. And answering the question correctly is is important. Jo, don't just jump to, uh, to answering the question. Listen to it first and then answer. Don't be too fast. Don't, avoid speaking too fast. Avoid speaking too slow. So be be okay. Don't go off topic. Thank you, Abhishek. Ah, uh, you're on mute. Whatever happens, please do not lose the energy in the in the uh, in an interview. It sucks the life out of an interview. The moment you lose energy, it sucks the life out of the room. Uh, uh, the call. 
it, it's with everything in life. If you're pitching anywhere, if you have energy, people believe and people know that you're making a mistake, by the way. Yeah, it's one of the hardest things in the world to do. You're making the mistake, but still they have the energy up, right? And I think that's very impressive. It's very impressive. It's very attractive in young people, right? Because we don't expect you to be robots, right? We're not interviewing. We're not interviewing AI, and the, uh, right, and not and AI is not interviewing you, right? Is the human beings interviewing you? They understand it. I think the biggest thing is so. Number one is energy. I think. One more thing I would say is to not get it, and it sometimes happens, do not get into an ideological or a philosophical argument with an interviewer, right? Do not make it a, this is my opinion versus your opinion and your opinion is bad. Um, I, you know what, you may have an interviewer um, and it's very humbling for us on the other side. You may know more than us actually. Right, and uh, you're more likely to know more than us because uh, we held a phone when we were in college or far later or whatever. You held a phone when you were probably even not even six months, right? So you have access to everything that we've not had for when we were even 20, 25 years old. So yes, you are ahead of us, absolutely. But by virtue of hitting somebody's ego, you may blind the interviewer with their own ego. Please remember, they are a human being. They are susceptible to the same things that you are. So if you blind the interviewer with, a, with their ego or with their ego trigger, you cannot fault them for not liking you. <laughs> they are a human being. They are not AI. Right? Uh, so even it's called the false positive, right? You may be um, uh, uh, you may be the right person, but I may not see you as the right person. Right? So I think those are two things I would say is are, are non-negotiables to not get into an ar argument or a ideological or philosophical discussion. Do not get triggered or trigger the interviewer. And more importantly, keep the energy. That's all. Thank you. Brenda, ma'am? I would say one thing that don't leave the interview before you know, end the interview without asking questions. Sometimes asking the right questions makes more of an impression than, you know, the questions you've answered. So make sure you have a list of five or six questions. My own, or you know, sort of recommendation is that you actually write them down and read from there because that gives the impression that you have actually put thought into it. So suppose you were going for, you know, the, uh, the geo interview you may ask like what was it what are the met met methodologies of you know is it exper exper experiential learning and you know are there other uh, sort of self-paced courses that you would have access to or you know how how would this program help to prepare you for uh, for dealing with the challenges of ai or whatever relevant to that bit but never leave the question because i know people who have actually been the toppers, toppers in the class and expected to, in an IIM and ex expected to definitely get the first day job, didn't get it just because of this. No questions answered means shows, like he says, less interest, less energy. You haven't put thought into that. So that then shows you, you know, so never leave without that and without thanking the interviewer or without taking the taking the coordinates. So, you know, asking what is the next process, when will we know the you know, the follow-up of the process, but asking questions, I think, is a must. Thank you. Um, and I think this really brings us to the end of our conversation today. And I think we've received a lot of questions and which we were probably not able to answer um, so much during our panel discussion. And they are probably a little bit more personalized regarding your own, um, you know, profile. Uh, what we want to say is that whatever tips that you've received today, try and implement that in your personal profile and, and see where you stand. The idea of this particular session was not to give you a ready-made answer, but to kind of just prepare you better or just make you understand what are you entering into. And as Zeems very rightly mentioned, that we all sincerely want you to perform well. That's why we did this. You know, we are all rooting for you. We want you 
to really make our life very difficult like abhishek said that we get to choose from the best of best and we're up for it you know we have a great team working very hard to do these interviews for you to ensure that you do really well and we at geo institute are really looking forward to you know having this process with you and i on behalf of the whole team and uh, you know all our panelists here wish you all the very best um for these interviews do well don't be nervous and we know you got this um so once again thank you uh, brenda ma'am abhishek amit uh, ms bindu for for doing this for our students and if you have final thoughts to give to our applicants um, we love to hear it from you thank you everybody i thank all the panelists for sharing the invaluable inputs on this i'm sure a lot of students have uh, benefited not just from i think it's uh, interview season coming through whole of december and january and it has been uh, will be of great help to all of them i see a lot of questions uh, out there which uh, a ma majority of which i'm sure we will answer on a personal basis one on one through email but i would like to address the question as to when are the interviews going to be called out how will we know about it it is a rolling process so interview calls are going out starting uh, this week and they'll be going on till the end of january so if you do not get a call don't worry about it because there are three different programs and two different levels of evaluation it is happening on a rolling basis so all the applicants who are on this call rest assured you can expect a call up till jan end it's going on so not to worry about it how can you say no to an answer you do not know be very polite and say sorry i do not know this answer would you like me to ask me anything else okay and uh, how do i explain gaps in my career is one question i'm asking or i've been preparing for my civil services and how do i address that it is uh, a lot of people we in fact give in the application uh, question which says you know is there anything else you would like to tell about yourself or how do you want to explain use this space to explain the gap in your career or in an interview trying for something which you're very passionate about is not wrong about it but also show how you were active during this period while you were studying for that and prepping for that and what were your you know how did you occupy yourself other than you know uh just following just civil services tests or something like that maybe you were doing voluntary work or you were doing you know some digital things showcase these try and address it that way these are some of the things which are coming on we'll try and answer all these individually later on or probably have another session to cover those questions and uh, thank you so much appreciate all of you joining us and uh, amit mrs mendes and abhishek thanks a ton for being there for all of thank you and yeah. can i just add okay. one thing uh, if that's yeah. okay yes I, i would i would just say to everybody on the call uh, inspire us guys and, and and girls because you know we want i think the institute will very nicely say this that they want something fresh these are very different courses these are very unique courses right and um, inspire us right i think bring your stories bring your experiences i think we want to be inspired inspired right true absolutely yes prana ma'am i just want to say one last word don't neglect your social media presence <laughs> and your linkedin brand please keep building your brand from today not only for this interview but for all interviews and you'll be having many more of them with many transitions please please start if you have not started start creating your your personal brand even ceos are doing it please don't yeah create a Abhit, any final words from you <laughs> yeah, yes and and it is based on the question that uh, that hema ma'am answered so th there can be certain questions where students uh, where the candidates will no not know the answer don't let uh, don't let that thought suck your energy that you don't know the answer don't lose confidence we are here to select you not to reject you we are looking for reasons to select you we don't want to reject you we want the best we would find other reasons to select you we would ask <laughs> other questions so uh, you know be authentic prepare as much as you can 
and stay positive. Thank you. And once again, thank you, everyone. And uh, to everybody who's joined us, good luck and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.